division matchup. Well, this guy has truly made the takedown a thing of beauty in mixed martial arts with respect to yourself and George St. Pierre and the truly great takedown artists. This guy's closing the gap and, and entering that company in the eyes of men. Oh, absolutely, because he's done such a great job of timing takedowns. You didn't see, I haven't seen anyone so good at slipping a jab into a takedown since George St. Pierre. Right. He does a phenomenal job of getting from step one to step two before his opponent even realizes, now he's in on my leg. And if they do get their hips back, immediately he's up into a foot sweep, or a headlock, or an inside trip. It's just so many different ways for him to get you to the floor that he will throw every single one at you every single time. And a lot of fighters talk about that wrestling maintenance and how hard it is, right, over the course of a career to continue to drill those things. He talks a lot about that, and that's why he's continued to realize success here in the UFC. Well, even dating to his time on The Ultimate Fighter DC back in 2015, you got the sense very early on that Kamaru Usman could be something special, as he has always put it. I'm a problem. He's a champion. He's a real problem. Yes, he is a problem, because he has a pace and pressure that most guys can't handle. We saw it in the RDA fight. We saw it in the Whitley fight. And because his wrestling is so smothering, as he showed in the Marais fight, his striking opportunities open themselves up. Kamaru Usman, as you say, J.A., is a real problem for anybody at 107. And he's a loyalist. He has been true to his coaches, Henry Hoof, Greg Jones, and everybody else. Kamaru Usman has realized the dream, and he'll try to take it to the next level here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this highly anticipated welterweight fight. More than five years apart, and they both possess a similar height and reach. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 16 wins, no losses. He stands six feet one is tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Shavkat Nomad Rothmanov. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A wrestler holding a professional record of 20 wins, two losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, Kamaru, the Nigerian Nightmare, Usman. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? You ready? Fight. All right, so here we go. Round one is underway, and when we sat down with him on Thursday, he understood the grappling challenge he was up against. He's not afraid to engage on the ground. It's a danger that is not worth risking. It is something that you don't want to play with. This grappler is that good. When this fight gets to the ground, you enter his world, especially when it looks like you hold the advantage on the feet. Stuff the takedown, no problem. And he connects there. Whoa! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, 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 oh. Quick level change now. He went single into a high crotch. Oh, he's taking his dude for a ride. Now goes in and secures the takedown. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Now trying to isolate an arm. Yeah, he's trying to go to a Kimura lock right here. He'll either try to get the submission or use the sweep. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now, DC, trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. Nicely done. Midway through round one. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, great position for him here. He's got the full mount. See if he can get that ground and pound going. Oh, he's got to get it going, but he can't rush. A lot of times, guys get in the full mount and they rush, they get nervous. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm winning. Reality is, 
you're winning, but it can change in a matter of seconds because then they can be gone. He's got to drop his hips, be really heavy at the opponent's base, and then just start to work, make the opponent give his back so that he can try to get his chokes off or find great grounding problems with very patient grounding problems from such a dominant position. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Ooh, nice knee to the body. Very nice. All oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop this. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. 27 total strikes have left. Oh, big it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Five minutes in the books. All right, let's look back at some of the action. DC, your good friend Mark Coleman, the godfather of the ground and pound, would be proud. He'd be very proud. He'd be very proud with the way that he showed his ability to use his ground and pound. He didn't waste any action. He did everything he needed to do. He was able to posture. He was able to control risk. He did everything perfectly in his approach in that ground and pound sequence. There's no way he's going to recover. I need you to get out there. All right, here we go with our next round. And DC, you've spoken a lot about ground and pound skills and how it's a little bit of a lost art in modern day mixed martial arts. Certainly not for this year. No, and he does it the old school way, right? Yeah. Now, nowadays, a guy to the side of the app guy, they use it as a barrier to get up. Right. Not with this guy. He stuffs your head in the corner, he gains his posture, and he just starts dropping hammers, dropping hammers until eventually you're gonna turn to your knees, he'll take your neck and choke you, or he'll just put you back down. It's it's crazy to watch him dictate his opponent's actions with his power from this position. Not many guys can generate that type right. of power. He's gonna start looking to try to attack a rear neck and choke, and that's exactly what he's doing. Good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. The sheer will is, is really remarkable to watch. Now Usman really getting the ground and pound going, DC. You gotta hit the escape. You gotta do something to get out of harm's way. You have to move. You have to be doing something. Usman's one of the best grapplers from the top that you've ever seen. Unbelievable awareness. Goes out of control of hip. He doesn't give you any out when he's on top of you. Uh, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Two minutes remain in the round. All right, he's got the hooks in, DC working off of his back. Now look for him to attack the neck of his opponent to try to get the rear choke. I mean, how many can he take? up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. Oh, both of the eyes start to swell pretty badly now. All right, side control now. I need you to push now. Under a minute now to go. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. Check the slick movement where he slumped the leg back in the middle. Now he's going to try to roll for a knee bar. Oh, nice. from that previous round, DC. A lot of good work with the ground and pound strike. Yeah, he was able to control posture, 
get himself postured up, land big ground and pound as he ended the round. What a great finish to a fantastic round. Nice round, nice round. Relax. Take some water and listen. You're killing him with your strikes, okay? Let's sharpen up. Let's be. You ready? You ready? So here we go. Five minutes remain in the fight. Nice straight punch. A lot of power on display from Kamar Usman as he lands yet again there. Kamar Usman shows in the Kobe Covington fight. Not only is he the best welterweight in the world, he may just be the toughest welterweight in the world because he went through the fire in order to retain that title. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Hip tosses him down, now we'll see if he can advance position. I mean, right into side control. Usman gets back up, back into his comfort zone. Look at the finish now because he's got it the corner, so it's very bad. Oh, big left hook there. Oh, beautiful level change. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Under three minutes now to go in the fight. So you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. All right, dominant position here. He's got the full mount. A lot of different ways he can go here. Maybe try to find an arm bar or just get the ground and pound. He can attack submissions, but those submissions will present themselves once he is landing that brutal ground and pound he is known for. Because then his opponents will start to get a little bit desperate to get out from under him, which will then in turn leave arms dangling, or he'll turn to his knees and get choked out. Close guard. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Soon that left eye is starting to shut. Oh! Holy smoke! Sweep. Oh, and that is it. Referee has seen enough, and maybe so have we. Your winner by TKO. That was a great performance. Way to land those strikes and go and chase down the finish when you get an opportunity. Enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. We set it inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve LeBing has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 57 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by knockout, Kamaru, the Nigerian Nightmare, Hoosha! Well, he's smiling ear to ear, and why not after a knockout like that? I need a ticket to the after party tonight. I mean, this is what dreams are made of. You dream of the knockout like this, and then the party after, where you and all your coaches get to celebrate the great handiwork.